Hey guys, welcome back to another information session on Day Trade the World, our great sponsor here at uh, Trader TV Live. So glad you joined us this afternoon. Uh, hit the like button and the subscribe button if you're joining us for the first time. Uh, we do this, it's typically once a month. We'll sit down uh, for an afternoon uh, and talk a little bit about Day Trade the World and talk a little bit about proprietary trading, how to open an office, and how to make one profitable. The next topic we're going to jump into right now is going to be on hiring and some of the key points we want to look for when it comes to hiring traders for a trading floor. So uh, let's bring in Milano now, ready to go with our next question. Uh, Milano, why don't you introduce yourself uh, to everyone and let uh, everyone know what you do here at Day Trade the World. And we're going to talk about hiring a little bit. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thanks for, for inviting me. Uh, I'm Milano and as for Bilal and my other colleagues, I'm working in, in, the, in Italy in the uh, Partner Acquisition Office. So, um, and yeah, we are dealing with, with uh, people from all over the world and we are helping them to uh, join this project, explaining the first steps and then bringing them to uh, opening their own office. Uh, and obviously one of the most asked questions is about uh, traders, about how to, uh, decide if a trader is, is ready to go live, how much he should remain in the demo mode, how much he should practice, uh, how to evaluate the quality of a trader, of a partner to decide if he's able to make consistent profits. And in a business like that, it's, I mean, it's the core of, of every single trading office. So we do have uh, this kind of uh, evaluation. There is a, an entire process to evaluate a, a trader and this evaluation is made both from uh, our side and from the partner side. So I think that it's one of the uh, most interesting thing is to understand the process um, where a trader is taken and then um, uh, bring it to, to the live mode. Yeah, so a, a lot of key points there, uh, Milano, and I'll, I'll jump in here and we'll bring in Neil and Sean to talk a little bit about this, but uh, you yeah. covered a lot, of, a lot of points there. I want to just kind of summarize a little bit. So when it comes to actually looking for the right person to hire, uh, some of the characteristics that uh, you know, we want to look for in those people, and then when it comes to actually getting that person to a <laughs> profitable state, uh, what is that uh, kind of process like along the road, and some of the key benchmarks maybe that we want to see them hit. So uh, let's pass things over to Neil and Sean here, and we'll talk a little bit about the hiring process uh, of putting traders on a trading floor, guys. Thanks a lot there. And of course, uh, you know, Sean and I, we've done, we've hired a lot of different traders. And uh, so right off the bat, I'll tell you, there is no cookie cutter. This is exactly what you were looking for in a trader. You don't, they don't have to be uh, you know, business student or finance, economics, whatever it might be. Uh, you have to have an open mind. Uh, the primary, quali uh, primary quality you're looking for that we actually just mentioned in, in the previous segment, uh, there was... Uh, somebody with a passion uh, for the market and a passion for learning because uh, you've seen if you watch the show or if you follow along in trading most traders they're gonna have failure at the beginning the market is unrelenting uh, it's unforgiving and if you aren't willing to show up every single day and put the work in and understand that there will be losses understand that there will be setbacks understand that you will never end your process of learning uh, then you're gonna have a lot of trouble so the first thing you're looking for is that passion right you're looking for someone that when you bring them in and you explain to them you're going to be in a simulator. You're, you're going to have to sit there paper trading and then learning a system for weeks and months. And then you're going to have to earn your way into live. And then once you've done that, there's going to be a risk limit on your account. Maybe you can lose $30 in a day or $50 in a day. And you have to earn more buying power. And you have to earn more of a bigger risk limit. If, if somebody reacts to that thinking, well, I'm going to be the guy that's going to go live in a week, and then I'm going to make money right away. A lot of times that can be a bit of a red flag. Uh, you don't want somebody who's going to show up to your office and then quit in two weeks. Because uh, time is everything. And if they're not willing to put the time in, you've wasted two weeks of your training program. Maybe you brought in 10 people and one or two immediately flame out. So you're always looking for that passion. And one thing I end almost every single interview with when I'm bringing traders in is, look, take the time to think over this is what you want. We're going to be in a simulator. You know what this process is going to be. You might take weeks or months or, or months to be profitable. Is this for you? If the answer is no, no hard feelings. If you can't think, do it right now and maybe you need to get yourself in a situation where six months down the line, you think you're, you're better able to handle it to start that journey, 
then you're going to go top of the list to me because it's a mature response to be able to say, you know what, I'm not sure I can do this now, but I'd love to in the future when either I have some money saved up or I'm in the right headspace. I love hearing that. That means when they come in, I know they're going to re- be in the right spot and they're going to go to the top of the list for me. But it's a nice question to end to ask at the end because uh, you do make sure you get that dedication, which I think is the most important thing to start off with. Yeah, I mean, uh, great point. Before I continue uh, on this, Milano, I want to say what's up, buddy. Uh, I've traveled to Italy, and the sales team guys, I can tell you, first class, Milano leading the way there. So uh, good, to, good to see you again, my friend, and, and thank you for joining us, and thank you for bringing us uh, these questions. Um, okay, my, my main point here is when to promote a trader to live, guys. And again, I, I hate saying the same thing over and over again, but we do have that simulator, as you know, Milano, and uh, that is a very accurate representation of what it's going to be like trading in live. The number one hurdle, though, and, I'm, and I think that you've probably heard this before, and, I, and it's probably a great question, is the mental capacity and the ability to trade live versus paper trading, right? A lot of traders will make a much different decision once they go live. So my suggestion is get the traders training in simulation mode. And then what I like to do is I like to think 60 to 70 percent uh, profitable days. So if you're going to trade in two weeks, Milano, that's 10 days. So I would like to see the trader positive for at least six or seven of those trading days before then putting that trader over to positive. Of course, there's a few hurdles that you have to pass in going from simulation to live. And maybe we'll talk about that next. But for me, at least 60% winning days is what we're sort of looking at when you go from simulation over to live. And then from that point, I would just say start small, right? You're not going to come out of the gate making a couple hundred bucks a day or anything like that in live. Start small, get your confidence on Milano, and then we can push the traders over to live mode. Yeah, we we mentioned the 10,000 trades policy in the in the training just because uh, I mean repetition is the key for for right. success. So the more the more you practice, the more you will be ready to go. And a key point here and something that, that our our partners are asking, how can I monitor my traders? Do I have the uh, power to see how they are trading? Can I change the status of, of, of their accounts? Do I have any kind of platform, how it works? And this is the metro platform that uh, all our offices are using. Right. Yeah, and this is, this is a really big feature because uh, you know, most people don't always understand how much power a manager has. You can look at all of the metrics that your trader has. Uh, you, you can look at how they do an individual markets by performance, number of trades in a day, uh, profit ratios. You can look at their performance uh, over, you know, whether it's an asset class or an individual or an individual stock. One of the best features is actually the way you can, can, can control risk. Now, once a trader has gone live, uh, they have an, a certain amount of buying power and a certain amount of risk that they're allowed to lose in a given day. What you can always do is you can have a trader who, yes, they're live in North America, but maybe when it comes to trading on, I don't know, let's just throw out a stock like, like an Apple, uh, they might have a, a share size limit. So they might have enough buying power to trade two or 300 shares in Apple, uh, but they make their money trading in small caps. So you could have a limit saying, hey, when you want to dabble in Apple, you're not really making a lot of money there. You've made your money uh, in a different strategy, but I want you to practice in live so you get that sense of real trading. Uh, Maybe I'll cap them at 50 shares or cap them at 40 shares or at 80 shares. And you can do those kinds of things as a manager. Uh, You also have real-time access to monitor their trading intraday see what they are doing in real time when are they making their decisions when do they get in when do they get out so uh, you actually have the ability to control all of that you can flatten your traders if need be but there's also a risk system in place which is based upon a trader's performance and i can't say this enough it takes the last 14 days and it's going to adjust your daily loss limit based on profitability uh, and losses as they do come up and down uh, ebbs and flows of trading. Uh, so that does some of the work for you, but not all of the work as a manager. You want to make sure you are monitoring your traders, going over their progress uh, as you see fit. And just keep in mind, like we said, not everybody is going to be exactly the same. Uh, the 10,000 trades is a great rule. Once traders go live, the sort of building up of buying power or bringing it down or maybe putting someone back into training mode, there is some discretion there, I would say, because you do, you do find there's different traders with different styles. And one thing Sean mentioned, that 60 to 70% uh, profitability, I love that one. We sort of go by that as well. One other thing I like to keep in mind is how often does a trader hit that loss limit? 
uh, you can have 70% profitable days, but if all three of those uh, 10 negative days that you, or, so th uh, three of those negative days out of 10 are days where you hit your maximum loss limit or exceed it, that's not the same as somebody who, when they're losing or not having a profitable day, has a small loss. So sometimes there are little nuances you want to make sure you're, t you're taking advantage of and learning about, and that's where that metro comes in because you can dig into all of that data. Yeah. Uh, Mileno, I, I did also want to bring up the point that it, it's a simple process to go from simulation to live, that's for sure, but there's also a go-live exam that a trader must take, and that yeah. ensures that the trader is responsible for and understanding the different market regulations associated uh, with all of the different markets here uh, at Day Trade the World, and that's a very important part. Uh, also, it, you know, a lot, of, a, a lot of owners, managers may be wondering, hey, look, do I trust my traders? Like, one day they're in simulation, then the next day, are they just going to automatically go to live? Do I not have control over that? The answer, of course, is you have full control. And Neil just mentioned about Metro. But what about buying power, right? Maybe that's a common question uh, that you get asked. Do you ever, Milano, get asked any questions about buying power or where a trader starts off with? Every day. <laughs> Okay, good. Yeah. And, 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 and the common answer really uh, is the truth. And it's about $50,000, right, of buying power gets associated with an account once it goes to live. And then again, because we, we can monitor everything, and, and as a manager, you can as well, you can then assign buying power based on results. So it can get up to 250. You can graduate right up to 250,000 quite quickly. So that's a big thing. And just to let everybody know, um, you know, buying power is thrown around if you're deserving of it. And the highest trader in the company, Milano, I don't know if you know this, but 25 million is the buying power USD uh, that that trader does have. Uh, I have between, I'll have to check, between seven and nine million myself. That comes with, you know, 17 to 20 years experience here uh, in the market. So again, as you go down and as you can prove yourself, to me, this is the number one and most important thing about day trade the world is, you know, it's based on how well you do as a trader and as an individual. So as you can grow, it's, it's like owning your own business when you're a trader. The more success you have is based on merit. And I think that's a big, huge word that traders need to understand. Neil's not going to have the same buying power as me and vice versa. One could be larger, one could be smaller. It's all about merit. What do you deserve based on your trading? Not only that, but also your style. Some traders may not need, uh, Mileno, 25 million. You know, they may need 5 million. They may need 50 million. But if it's earned, then yes, day trade the world doesn't have any problem in graduating that up. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing also, it's also about nuances. I mean, uh, we can have different buying powers, different styles of trading, different strategies. But something that is working for me can 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 be difficult for for you. But that's the be the beauty of this process because I can uh, try my things in the demo mode. Then I have the go live module. Right. You can see about that and then you can discuss and then I can apply it in the live mode if 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 it's working for me I can adapt it to this uh, ppro8 and and make profit and, and one thing uh, uh, too to keep in mind is uh, there's two processes for buying power one obviously a trader has to go to their their office manager and risk manager and say hey look I'd like to be using more buying power but that manager then submits that request uh, through the Metro system, right? So it's not as if like you just get whatever you ask for. There's going to be a review of how profitable that trader might be. And uh, certainly that's another check and balance that's going to be there that uh, I think is an important one to keep in mind. And I've, I've said this to traders when, when I get the question when, the, when, the, when they're asking. I think it's always a valuable thing to say is, in my experience with Day Trade of the World, I've never really seen a trader who was profitable, who needed more buying power for a strategy and was making money that wasn't able to get it. You know what I mean? Like, I've never seen that situation happen. Uh, the responsive to different styles of trading. If someone has some kind of a pair strategy where the actual amount of BP, their buying power that they're using, might not be sort of uh, too heavily correlated to the amount of actual market risk that's in there, then there can be adjustments for that and an understanding of that. And that's what that process is all about. Uh, so I love the fact that it's a, it's, it's a two-step process to be able to get more buying power. And everyone's always concerned with how much capital uh, they can get when really it's all about that process. And I think as long as we keep that in mind and those checks and balances, uh, you know, everyone's going to be uh, happy with how they're able to grow. Like Sean said, uh, everyone grow at their own pace, but there's buying power to go around partially because of that system that we have in place. Uh, so you can't really say that enough. 
Right, so I'll take it from here. Uh, great stuff. Uh, Milano, we appreciate your time uh, this afternoon. Uh, I, I mean, a lot of uh, great information there. We'll wrap it up at that uh, and hope to speak to you again soon. That was, uh, that was a lot of fun, guys. I hope you learned a little bit. Just to summarize, uh, we touched on how the process works to take a trader from uh, the, the simulator to live. We talked a little bit about uh, how that process is actually completed through the Metro site. We also touched on uh, how capital is allocated and how much of uh, capital is allocated. So uh, Milano, we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up at that and send it over to Valeria. Hey guys, thank you for this great information. Please subscribe to this channel and join our live trading show every day at 9 a.m. Eastern Time.